No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by My Road Reel, the world's largest short film competition, is back. Shutterstock, your source for stunning HD and 4K footage, plus high quality music. Blackmagic Design, amazing solutions for film, post production, and television. Hey guys, Andy with No Film School. We're here with Mike, who's a senior product manager at RE. Uh, he's telling us about some new firmware updates to the Sky Panels. What's going on? Yeah, so we're just releasing, we released it yesterday. Uh, so it's a, a new firmware update, firmware 2.0 for all of the different Sky Panels that we offer. Um, and we have actually 10 major new features included in this firmware update. So it's not just uh, little bug fixes or, or minor en enhancements, it's actually 10 new features. The first one, the biggest one, is we're including gel libraries into the fixture. So now you could actually go through and scroll the scroll through the menu and pick different Roscoe and Lee gels. So color corrections, party colors, all that kind of stuff. You could just go through and pick the one that you want and it will match it. You're saying it could, it could make gelling these lights obsolete? It, well, we, you never have to gel the lights, right? So I mean you could pick the favorite color that you want and the light panel will emulate that color. And the other cool thing is that once you pick that gel, you could either pick your, your, your color temperature base. So if you want that gel to be on a 3200 degree light or you want that gel to be on a 5600 degree light, you could choose that. You could also choose whether you want the best color representation of that gel or the brightest version of that gel. So we actually can mix the LEDs a little bit differently to give you a little bit of extra brightness, uh, but the color rendition comes down a little bit. So you have the option. So cool. Uh there are nine other features? Nine other features, so that's just one. So yeah, the other one is we have what's called low mode, low end mode. Low end mode actually enables us to get to very, very low light levels and still maintain really accurate color temperatures and high color rendition. So of course, nowadays camera sensors are so sensitive that shooting at low light levels is really important. And of course, the sky panel is really, really bright. But now we have a mode that enables you to get really uh, a low end uh, light levels as well. The only sacrifice is that you can't shoot at really high frame rates. That's the only thing. So you have to shoot at just normal frame rates. So it introduces flicker for high frame rates? For high frame rates, yeah. It could, it could introduce more flicker for high frame rates, even though it probably would introduce less than most other fixtures anyway. So the next one is called tungsten mode. So with tungsten mode, we're actually able to emulate the behavior of a tungsten fixture. So for example, if you enable that mode, as you're dimming, it's actually warming the color temperature automatically. Um, it'll also produce the same effect as a, the strike on and off effect. So for example, if you go from 100% to 0% really quickly, it'll actually warm the CCT and have like an afterglow effect. So you know, you know, when you turn off a tungsten lamp source, the filament as it cools down, there's a little bit of an afterglow. So through programming, we could actually emulate that. All right, what's number four? So uh, the next one is we have four different dimming curves uh, built into the light. So before we used to have one way of dimming the light. It would follow a, a, a certain curve. But now you could actually pick the curve that you want. So we have four different choices. We have a, a logarithmic dimming curve, which kind of goes like this. And it gives you a high resolution control over the high end of the dimming range. We have an exponential dimming curve, which that's the default, gives you a high resolution control over the low end dim of the dimming range. We have a linear curve, which is basically a one for one. And then we have an S-curve, which gives you the benefit of the logarithm and the exponential with not so great control over the middle. So depending on what you're doing, one of those dimming curves might be better for whatever application that you're trying to do. In, inside, of course, we've always had DMX built into the light, but now we're also including RDM. So RDM stands for Remote Device Management. And RDM allows you to actually have two-way communication between a lighting console and the fixture, which allows you to not only get information from the fixture, but also send information to the fixture. So you could do things like set uh, the DMX address, or set the DMX protocol, or change the fan mode, or whatever. You could actually do that all remotely from a console instead of having to go to the fixture and change it on the menu. So RDM is really great for kind of remote management. Um, and then the next one is Artnet. And Artnet is basically it's DMX and RDM over Ethernet. So we have a LAN port on the uh, fixture, so you can actually connect this to a network, and then uh, through using something that could generate Artnet, so for example a console or even some apps on your on your phone can do this, uh, have this capability, control the fixture that way instead of using the five pin DMX to run it through it. So we made a new DMX channel, so we have a lot of DMX protocols, and at the end of each of those protocols, we ended a new. Ch we we have a new channel that allows you to control the fan. So you could, through this channel, you could either select uh, different fan modes or you could actually turn the fans completely off. 
Um, and then, you know, so maybe someone says, you know, roll camera, you turn the fans off. Someone says cut, you can turn the fans back on and cool the light off. Will it regulate itself if it starts overheating? Yeah, so if it starts, if it gets too hot, which what, from our tests, what we've seen is that it basically somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes, uh, it'll start to get a little bit too hot. And what we'll do is it'll turn the fans on really, really low just to get kind of air movement. And then it'll turn them on a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then uh, it'll, it, it stops at basically 20 decibels. Uh, and if, it, just like the regular behavior, you know, the, the fixture will always protect itself. If for whatever reason it gets really hot, for whatever reason, the LEDs will always turn themselves off to protect the fixture. And then you could know that something's wrong and you could diagnose it and fix whatever is happening. Uh, so you can control all of those things over not DMX, right? You can manually control it? The, the fan mode? Yeah, so the fan mode you can control through the, the fixture here, but you can also uh, control it now through DMX. Uh, what's number nine? Uh, so number nine, or I guess we're getting, so it's actually three different things with the USB. So I had mentioned that you could put in the USB stick to do uh, software updates, but we've actually added more functionality in there. So if you have a USB stick attached here, you could actually export error logs and server lo service logs. So if you get an error message, whatever it might be, you could export those service logs to a USB stick and then you could email them to an area service person wow. and they could tell you, okay, this is what happened, try this, and then we could solve the problem you know, just over the phone just by looking at the service logs. Um, the next thing is the ability, so we have, uh, right now you could save up to 10 presets onto the sky panel, whether it be a color temperature or a hue or a gel. So you could save those 10 presets uh, on the fixture, but now we have the ability of saving those presets to the USB stick so that you could actually uh, share those presets with different fixtures. That's great. That's, uh... Yeah, and then the last one is the ability to save all of the fixture settings. So for example, the DMX protocol, the fan mode, your, your, your display settings, all of those different things, you could save, basically clone the fixture settings to the USB stick, and therefore if you're setting up like a, a, a lot of sky panels, like 50, 100 sky panels, instead of going through each menu, you can now just put the USB stick in from one, the previous fixture and load those settings onto the next one and do that, you know, kind of consecutively to get all of the sky panels on the same settings. Uh, what's next? What's next on the timeline? Well, I mean, so this one is available now for free off of our website. It's available for a day. You can actually download the, up, up, uh, da uh, the up update file, put it onto a USB stick, and if you have a sky panel, you can do that today. Um, but of course, yeah, we're not going to stop there. We have a, a lot of other ideas for adding more features to the product. Uh, anything you can tell us about either new features or new uh, new heads that you guys are coming out with? Uh, we, we don't have any new heads at the moment, uh, but uh, you know we're always working on new stuff. Uh, we do have a new accessory for the sky panel called the sky bender. The sky bender is basically an asymmetrical reflector that goes in front of the source that allows you to light a wall really even with really even uniformity. Let's take a look at that. Sure. So one of the things that we came out with, as you mentioned, was the sky bender. So the sky bender is an asymmetrical reflector that this goes right into the front of the sky panel and allows you to light up a wall uniformly. One of the, the hard things about lighting a wall is to try to get it the same intensity at the bottom from the top because, especially for example like a green screen, you really want to have even intensity or it becomes very hard to key. So with something like this, you just slide into the front of the fixture, light up a wall, and then you have the same intensity at the bottom of the wall as you do at the top of the wall. What's the price point on this thing? So this will have a list price of about $960. Uh, it's going to be shipping in July, uh, and we'll have a size also for our S30 as well. Cool. Thank you, Michael.